Hello, I'm Dr. Allison from TAP, and I'm the director of the Counseling Center at Spalding University. I wanted to make this video to give you some more information about our counseling center, how we work, and how we might be a little bit different from some other more traditional counseling centers. So first I'll tell you a little bit just about what we do. So primarily we are providing individual psychotherapy. So that may take many forms. Um, we do have unlimited sessions, so I, I allow people to come as many times as they really need to. That does not mean that they can come and sit and do nothing or just gossip or chat. So if they've got goals that they're working on and the therapist can actually see that they're working on those goals, then they are welcome to keep coming as long as they want to or as long as they need to. Now, so for some folks, if they're not working on some severe symptoms or anything that they absolutely need weekly therapy for, if we start to get overrun with clients and we have a waiting list, then I will ask clinicians to start moving people to every other week or even sometimes once a month, depending on what they really need. We're also flexible as far as scheduling, as far as length of sessions. So some clients might only need half an hour. So we've got a lot of folks who are maybe working on some specific symptoms or they might be folks who are on the autism spectrum or any number of folks who feel like they don't really need more than about half an hour at a time. If that's what they need, then we just schedule for half an hour. Most folks are coming in for about a traditional 50-minute session, which works well. Other folks really need that little bit of extra time. There are some folks who may come in and it takes them a good 15 minutes to really warm back up to the therapy situation. And then once they get warmed up, then they really start working and they might need another hour after that to actually get through all that work. So for those folks, we might schedule them for something closer to an hour and a half session. So that is totally dependent on the therapist and the client, and we'll work on that supervision to figure out what is actually best. So that individual therapy is our primary mode. We also do both family and couples therapy. So if there is a student who wants to come in and work with a significant other on an issue, they are welcome to bring that person, even if the other person is not a Spalding student. We can also work with families, and so if we have a Spalding student who has a family and they need to work on some issues with them, they can bring them in. That's worked really well this year with a couple of mothers and their children, and they've come in and worked on some issues that they had amongst themselves, and that's worked well. So those are some of the primary things. We also offer groups this year, and actually the last two or three years we've had a women of color group that's gone really well. I would love to continue that in the future. I would really like to have some other groups um, that are ongoing. It's hard to get a group going at a university, so we will keep trying. But if we have practicum students or postdocs who are really interested in groups, I would really want the, to make those happen. We also do a fair amount of assessment. So we've got Practicum 1 students who are here as well as every um, different level of uh, therapy practicum students and a postdoc. So our postdoc does the primary supervision for all of our assessments. So that person will supervise our Practicum 1 students. Uh, we tend to have two um, the first half of the year and two in the second half of the year. So that person supervises them. That person also will supervise most if not all of the assessments that the therapy practice students are doing. I will be doing most if not all of the therapy um, supervision for most people. We do, between myself and the postdoc, we do share some supervision if someone needs some adjunct supervision. I feel like it is really important that a practicum student especially get at least that hour of individual face-to-face -face supervision that they need every week on a consistent basis. So that we always schedule. So that will be on my schedule and it will be on your schedule. And unless something comes up that prevents us from doing that, we will have that hour always set aside. In addition to that, we also do a weekly case conference meeting. So that's about an hour and a half, and it's more group supervision, but we also do a lot of didactic work in there, and so I'll bring in members of the psychological community to come in and present on different, different topics. Um, let's see if I can run through those topics. We usually have eating disorders, OCD, mindfulness, meditation, sometimes ACT, sometimes DBT, um, TLDP, Time Limited Dynamic Psychotherapy. Um, I think I said eating disorders and OCD, sometimes sports psychology, um, other anxiety disorders, uh, gender and sexuality. We have someone to come talk about that. We do see a fair number of trans students at the Counseling Center, and so we want to make sure that you're up with all of that. And we usually have um, 
someone come in and talk about cultural humility at least once, sometimes twice um, throughout the year. That might not be all of them, but we do try to have a lot of didactics so that you have all of that other extra information to go on. So that's the basics of supervision. Let me tell you a little bit more about Spalding's population. So we have sort of three distinct sets of students here at Spalding. So we have graduate students, and those graduate students are in a multitude of different areas. So we have psychology, occupational therapy, athletic training, education has several um, different programs, master's and doctoral programs. Um, I may have already said OT. <clears throat> um, social work and nursing. That might not have covered all of them, but we do have a lot of graduate programs. And so a lot of those folks do tend to come see us, especially the nursing folks and the OT folks. Those are really stressful sorts of um, programs for people. So that's our graduate students. And those folks tend to function on a semester sort of schedule. Um, and so we'll see kind of an ebb and flow with them. Of They might slowly come in at the beginning of a semester, and then we'll see a lot of them in the middle of a semester. And then by finals, they've kind of gone back down a little bit more. With our undergraduate population, there are two kind of groups there as well. So one group is an adult learner group, and that group is folks who are 23 and above, and sometimes we see people up into their 60s in the counseling center. So those folks tend to have class, uh, what each class that they have during a six-week session is just one night a week. And so for six weeks, there are actually seven six-week terms throughout the year. And so for six weeks, they will focus on two, sometimes three classes, and they will have an evening class, usually six to ten at night. So these are folks who are working throughout the day, who have families, who are balancing a lot of stuff. And so they may need to come to therapy for a variety of different issues. Our other population are our traditional undergrads. So those are the folks who are 17 or 18 up to about 23, 24, 25. Some of those folks live in our residence hall. We have um, about uh, between 150 and 200 students who live in the residence halls on campus. There are two residence halls. So those folks may live here, but they may not. We also have a lot of undergrad, traditional undergrads who are commuters. So for those folks, they are also on that six-week schedule. And so they will have class for six weeks. The traditional students have typically day classes, and so they will have the same class four days a week. And they'll have either two or three classes in a session. And then between each session, they have a break. So there's a break week in between the sessions. And that's when it's sometimes a little bit slower in the counseling center. So those are distinct populations. I feel like one of the ways that Spalding Counseling Center is a little different than some other counseling centers is that there's a more of a community mental health feel to our counseling center in that our students are coming from a, a real diversity of backgrounds. And so our folks come in, some very traditional students who um, do not have major psychopathology and might have some relational issues to work out, um, some stress and anxiety to work out, but nothing too severe. And then we have folks all along the spectrum of severity. So we do see folks who have thought disorders occasionally. We see folks with some, some, some more severe depression, uh, bipolar sometimes. We see some folks with eating disorders, although we tend to refer any serious or severe eating disorders, we do refer out um, to another clinic in town. Um, but because we have that kind of variety, <clears throat> we have a lot of folks who are coming in who are really struggling with a lot of issues. We do see a lot of trauma, and so probably more than 50%, maybe more like 70% of our folks have had some kind of traumatic experience or just traumatic issues throughout their life. And so we're really working with a lot of that trauma. So in that way, it sometimes can feel a little more severe, but it's still within the context of a university and having the other support that we have at the university. Uh, as far as diversity goes, we also have lots of ethnic diversity, socioeconomic diversity, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression. So we have all of those different presentations in the Counseling Center and lots of different folks to work with. I'm trying to think what else I haven't mentioned. Oh, um, outreach. So we like to do um, at least six to eight outreaches throughout the year. We have some graduate assistants who help to plan some of those outreaches. And so they will typically plan um, probably one every six week session. And so those will be planned and practicum students can always join in to those outreaches. 
but as a practicum student or postdoc, you are also welcome to come up with your own sorts of presentations. These can range in lots of different ways. So primarily we do a lot of passive programming. And so that would mean we would set up a table uh, outside the cafeteria or outside the pod, which is our mini cafeteria. <clears throat> and we would just set up a table with information about different things. So um, we might do a depression screening, an ADHD screening. We might talk about seasonal affective disorder in the winter. Um, we actually have two of the happy lights in our library during the winter months and with some information they are in the library for students. So we do that kind of passive programming. We can also do more active programming. So you are welcome to go into the classroom and give presentations. We will do that several times throughout the year when we'll go and just present on what the Counseling Center does. So sort of a marketing kind of piece. You can also come up with other educational programming for students. And so if you are really passionate about an area, and you want to let students know about that area or what's going on or you want to help students with some self-care or anything like that, you're welcome to develop that program and we can figure out what is the best delivery method for that. So it might be going to our auditorium and doing a full presentation. It might be doing a video and letting us put that out there on social media. So we can get creative about those sorts of things. So that's the basics of our outreach. Um, I'm trying to Think. I think those are the primary things I wanted to let you know. Um, hopefully this video has given you some idea of how we function, what we're like, and then can um, help you figure out if you have other questions. But you can feel free to email me any questions that you have at afrom, just A-F-R-O-M, at spalding.edu. Or um, when we set up an interview, then we can go ahead and talk through all your questions then. Thank you very much and have a great day.